What up everybody, it's iPadBeatMaking.com and today I want to show y'all a really cool trick in order to control your playhead, that means your start, stop, rewind, record button, things like that, inside of Cubase's with your MIDI controller. So say you got a keyboard that's got those playhead controls on it, you'll be able to use that inside of Cubase's. Now, yes, if you watch the channel enough, you know I'm usually doing beats on Nano Studio 2, but please understand, Cubasis is an incredible app, and with Cubasis 3 specifically, I would argue that there currently isn't a more featured, traditional style type of DAW that's compatible with iPad, iPhone, and Android. You've got proper busing or groups, you can freeze tracks, and so much more. I mean, there's really a lot to love about it. But like anything, it has its pros and it has its cons, and unfortunately, you're not able to control faders, panning, things like that with a MIDI controller like you would on a traditional desktop DAW like you can in something like Beatmaker 3. And even with some of these same parameters, you can control those things in like Nano Studio 2. You, you can control panning, you can control volume, things like that inside of Nano Studio 2. And you can even do it inside of Zen Beats and I'm sure a whole other host of other DAWs on iOS. So this is a glaring omission from Cubasis. They say that they will one day implement this or it's on their list or something like that. They're looking over it. Hopefully we get that sooner than later because it's been years in the making that this request has gone on. However, there isn't an obvious way to control play, stop, record, things like that inside of Cubasis, but it can be done. And today I'm gonna show you how. With that said, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit the like button. And if you aren't currently subscribed, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now, a lot of you newcomers to the iOS music production scene might not be familiar with the app Audio Bus. You might not even know what it is or what its purpose originally was, but before we had the AEV3 format and the inner app audio format, Things like Audiobus was used to connect apps together so that they'd be able to communicate with one another. And they were really one of the trailblazers in terms of iOS music production. And they really helped get the platform taken seriously, I personally believe. And even though you don't need Audiobus for your usual day-to-day -day stuff now that we have things like the AUV3 format, it still can be a really useful tool. And I would definitely recommend that if you need MIDI playhead control within Cubases that you download it. It's a good app to have because there's a lot of use cases for it and you can come up with some really creative layouts for your music production workflow. It's definitely worth exploring and it's especially good like I said for in a situation like this where Cubases doesn't give you an obvious way to control the playhead but since it's audio bus compatible we're going to get into audio bus and you'll be able to see how you can control its playhead so i'm going to walk you through how to do it and for this first example i'm going to be using a sensor morph and if you own a sensor morph the awesome news is that i've got a cubase's profile available at ipadbeatmaking.com for the music production overlay so you can download that and go ahead and get started i know there's a price on it but if you've ever grabbed any of the cubase's related kits you get that free, just hit me up at iPadBeatMaking at gmail.com. If that's the case, I'll make sure to get you sorted out. But this layout is really cool because the drum pads are all lined up to the drum pads and Cubases. Cubases three drum pads start at the top left being one, and it's not the traditional MPC style of playing drums. So I've assigned them on the Sensor Morph to be bottom left starts at one and it goes up from there. So be sure to check that out. Now, if you don't know about the Sensor Morph, be sure to check this video out here that I'm sure will go a long way to help you understand what it is, what it's good for, and if it's the right purchase for you. And if you do actually go and purchase a Sensor Morph or own a Sensor Morph, I've got a ton of over like templates i got them for luma fusion nano studio 2 and cubases as well on ipadbeatmaking.com so be sure to check those out with all that being said i know that's a long introduction but let's get started on how we're going to control playhead inside of cubases 3. so first we're going to open up audio bus and now that we're in audio bus we're going to go down at the bottom left and hit midi now we hit MIDI input and we're going to select Cubases 3. Tap to launch. It's going to launch Cubases 3. So down here, we're going to hit this MIDI port symbol. And then you're going to select the Bluetooth symbol next to profiles in the top left. And 
our morph is connected right here so we're all set but while we're still in the screen we're going to select the things that we want to control so for instance we've got record here let's click that now it's listening for MIDI on the Sensor morph we'll go ahead and push the record button it now has that memorized we'll go here hit the play button and we'll hit the play button here it's now got that memorized now there isn't an official stop button on the playhead uh, control situation with Cubases so we don't have to assign anything there but let's say we wanted to just assign the rewind button or the start from beginning button let's go ahead and hit that and we'll just assign that to the stop button in this situation we hit done and now we can go ahead and launch Cubases and you can see the audio bus symbol is here but we can go ahead and hide that by just clicking it and we're going to hit record and we are actually recording but we have no tracks currently so we're not recording anything but the playhead is what you use to stop and you know go back to restart the track but if you want to start from the beginning we can hit the rewind button that we have and let's just experiment with this really quick here let's go ahead and now we've got a piano so we'll go ahead and hit So yeah, it's that simple. We've got our playhead assignments completed and that's the case for the Sensol Morph. Now, what if, for instance, you don't wanna use the Sensol Morph? Let's say you have something like the X key Air. Well, let's try and see what we can do with that. Okay, so now we've got the X key Air here and we're gonna go back to Audio Bus and we're going to remove our, we can save this profile if we want right here in the save folder but we're not going to we're just going to undo everything we just did by hitting the X button here and primarily what I'm concerned about is trying to get at least the record button and maybe and just maybe a playback button also so let's go ahead and make sure that our X key air is connected it is currently not so let's go ahead and make sure we get that connected all right so now we've got our X key air connected and we are going to hit the record assignment it's listening I don't use the modulation button that much so let's go ahead and assign the modulation button to record and then we can go ahead and hit the play button and we'll have sustain because that's the only one that's sending MIDI and the modulation in the way that we need it to. So now we've got the modulation button is our record button and our sustain button is our play button. And so we can go ahead and there it is. So toggling. Bam, and so there's a couple of examples on how you can use your MIDI controller to control the playhead of Cubasis 3. Obviously, if you have a keyboard controller that has dedicated stop, start, record button, rewind button, things like that, you're gonna get way more usage out of this than if you have something like the X key air where you basically got to repurpose the button if that's what you are trying to accomplish but the point is to show you that it can be done and that is a beautiful thing for Cubase's users so with that said if you enjoyed the video please be sure to hit the like button and if you aren't currently subscribed please subscribe and hit the notification bell and be sure to check out some of the best kits available for iOS especially for Cubasis 3. We're getting a lot of ports done for that over at iPadBeatMaking.com. We've even got some free downloads as well and some really cool gifts that are going to surprise you in your email if you grab any of the bundles. We'll be sure to make sure you're straight. Anyways, with all of that said, it's iPadBeatMaking.com. Peace.